Hi everyone. Today's a good day to do a bunch of housekeeping things around the greenhouse and figured I'd bring you along, show you what's happened over the summer and what's going on as we enter into winter. Before we get started, I wanted to thank our Patreon contributors. The extra income is used to help purchase camera equipment and keep producing these videos. And with the ever dwindling YouTube revenue, uh, the Patreon subscriptions really help the channel out a lot. Our top contributors are TrueAquaponics.com, GreenLifePlanet.net, GlassBottleOutlet.com, and GrowPockets.com. Over the summer, I showed you these bell siphons that I came up with that are 3D printed. And since uh, putting them in, they've been running basically perfectly. One thing I found interesting is now that I have the covers over these, I'm getting these worm castings up along the top rim of everything. And the worms just sort of hang out above the water line where it's nice and moist and do their business right up in that area. So, somewhat interesting. My Meyer lemon bush has produced a whole bunch of lemons this year. Uh, they're a little bit smaller than usual because I didn't prune them off as uh, much as I should have to thin them out, but they'll be fine. I also noticed a lot of the leaves are getting debris on them, and this is from me spraying for the white flies or aphids with insecticidal soap or neem oil. So I'm going to have to be more vigilant about um, washing these plants off since they don't get rain to just naturally keep them clean. I'm sure it's not helping the uh, growth of the plants out at all. The dwarf banana is looking really good this year. Put out a lot of leaves, so hopefully it'll overwinter fine. And of course behind that is our full-size banana, which is almost up to the ceiling. And usually I hack it back, but so many people tell me not to do it, I'm just going to leave it alone this year and see what happens. The dwarf banana also sent out a bunch of pups, so I just sort of jokingly stuck them in the grow grips to keep them alive until I found a new home for them. And they actually are working fairly well at holding the plant up and getting some new roots to grow in here. I get a ton of people asking about updates on the rocket mass heater. It really doesn't have a whole lot of updates. It's been going great for several years now with almost no maintenance. You can see it's even running today just to take the edge off in here while I do some work. And this one is uh, burning pellets without any problems. I did take the shroud off of the entire heater and just blow a fan across it when I want to um, heat up the greenhouse. I was finding it was just easier to heat it that way than to try to shroud everything and store that heat under the ground. So I'm just using it as more of a, a stove than a, a mass heater at this point. The wood burning stove has also been doing well. I'm surprised it's still holding out because I abused this one pretty heavily. I did take the radiator off the top. In fact, it's sitting behind it here. Um, it did spring a leak and I decided not to replace it. So I just plumbed the internal tank on the side and that directly runs water into the fish tank. And the stove has been doing really well with those secondary burners that I installed a couple of years ago. I had a large section of my rosemary die off this year. I'm not sure why. The back side of it looks great, but one of these branches just completely upped and died. This is original when I built the greenhouse, so it's over five years old. And I'm not sure just don't know what happened with it. So we're going to spend some time pruning off all the dead branches, cleaning it up, and maybe get some new growth to come in uh, into this dead area. Once I pruned away some of the branches, I found these things in here. I'm not exactly sure what it is. It's some type of a fungus growing on here, or if it's just naturally part of the plant. Whatever it is, it's dried up and dead. I think it's part of the plant. Maybe some of you experts out there know what that is. I'm not a big expert on plants, but it doesn't look like it's really part of the plant and shouldn't be there. The 
rest of the plant looks good, but I'm still gonna cut it back pretty hard just to uh, free up some space in my beds because it's leaning over into the bed. And then uh, it should branch out again in the spring with new growth by the, the base. As I was thinning out the plant, I came across this interesting area where I noticed these little uh, roots coming out and then the whole branch has essentially rooted itself and became a, a new plant. Roots and all. There's the end result. It looks horrible but it should come back once we get some spring weather coming along. And this is what I removed from it. So probably took out three quarters of the plant and just left this behind. The bed where I had my cherry tomatoes was also hiding a tea plant underneath this. And this has grown quite well over the years. It's been flowering. Again, the leaves on them are dirty, so I really need to start washing some of these plants off. And where I had the deep water culture, tomatoes. I replace that with lettuce. And you can see how spindly it is just from the lack of light. This is a romaine style so it tends to grow upright anyways but they really start stretching for light during the fall and winter months. The outdoor bed is long done and you can see it's now frozen over. I was going to let it fill up, which I did, and then it got too cold. My plan was to fill it up and then uh, siphon out the sludge that's gathered up along the bottom, but with all this ice in here, that's not going to happen now. So maybe this spring we'll get this bed cleaned up a little bit better. The new hoop house project is coming along nicely, but I'm basically done with it for the winter. I got all the hoops in and most of the trench backfilled, but you can see here, didn't quite finish. I had headed out to Portland, Oregon for the aquaponics conference and also took some time off. And since then we've had some rain and with the freezing, the trench has collapsed back in around these posts and now it's all frozen in here so I can't adjust things where do they need to go. I'm also going to need my tractor this winter and take the bucket off and the backhoe and put the plow and snow blower on so I was using the backhoe for the greenhouse project but putting the snow removal equipment on it's a little bit more important uh, for us here. So the greenhouse project will continue this spring. This winter I'm hoping to revisit my solids filtration system with this swirl filter and the inline mineralization tank. And if you're not familiar with it, um, I'll leave a link to the various videos about this. But now that it's a couple years old, I have some refinements that I want to make to it and we'll be replacing the entire thing. And hopefully this winter I'll get around to it. One plant we have no shortage of in here is the oregano. And it's, it just grows like a weed. I have to uh, pull it out every year, take out anything that's re-rooted itself, and start in the spring with one plant. But we have fresh oregano at any point in time throughout the year. And if we had smell-o-vision, this just smells absolutely fantastic. It's one of my favorite things I grow in here. This year I tried something a little bit new doing some sweet potatoes in the flood and drain beds. We just happened to have one in our pantry that was starting to root, so I decided to plant it in here. And it actually grew quite well. And now with winter setting in, you can see it's starting to die off a little bit. And I guess it's time to dig it up and see what we have in here. I guess the best way is just to prune everything off since I have my clippers out here from the rosemary get them out of the way. And 
we have to excuse all of our white flies and fungus gnats. They're a perpetual problem now at this point. Oops, it looks like it's replanted itself over on the side here. These could probably be replanted next year. They're just covered with some worm castings, but they look pretty good. Pretty good size. You can still see the red wigglers on here. It looks like something ate its way into it, a couple holes. Still should be edible. This must have been the original tuber. And you can see there's just nothing left to it. Once it sends up the plant, they sort of rot out. And I can see a couple little snails in here. One thing with the media beds, they always seem to have these little tiny snails in them. They're not in the water, but they're in the beds and can get into the root crops. So that might be what's dug a hole through there. Another halfway decent sized one. Most of these are, are all fairly small. We'll just save all these for next year and plant them. So that's about it for now. I'm going to also bring in our amaryllis plants. I leave those down here over the uh, summer so they can regain their energy and then I just let them go dormant in our basement over the winter. It's the only thing that has soil in here and I just top them off with the uh, fish water and they've been doing great for years.